Machine learning, also known as artificial intelligence, or AI for short, is spreading to every single part of our lives. But it's only as good as the data that it uses and the way that it learns. So about eight years ago, I took a hazard perception test in the UK. This is part of getting a driving license over there. The test is a series of short video clips where you click when you see a hazard coming up or the danger getting worse. I'm a video game designer and a researcher, and, you know, professional game developers, we're pretty quick at seeing danger coming up on screens. So when I was taking my test, for some reason, though, when I got to the end of it, two-thirds of my clips had been disqualified. That was a little bit odd. So I asked the agency why this was, and what they said was, uh, we're not saying you were cheating, but our algorithm found a strange pattern in your clicks, and so a lot of your tests were disqualified. I found that slightly odd. So when I mentioned this around my office, it turned out that a lot of other game developers had exactly the same problem. The solution was simple, though. What you did was, you watched out for when the danger was coming, and immediately, You'd wait for two seconds, and then you would click. <laughs> so why did that work? Well, game developers were clicking a little bit earlier than the AI thought was normal. Uh, and so they, we were all flagged as trying to cheat this system. We could only actually pass through this system now by kind of backwards engineering the code and the data that it had learned from. It seemed a little bit strange. Now that test was using a very, very simple version of AI, but it is one example of how a government body is using AI in kind of everyday societal functions. To many of us, that probably doesn't feel like AI. And we're used to this kind of scientific ver sci-fi version of this, which is kind of sentient computers with full personalities, like Hal in 2001, or the replicants in Blade Runner, or Janet in The Good Life, The Good Place even. But the reality of AI today is that it's really just a glamorous term for an algorithm. It's just an equation. It puts data through human-made systems, and it comes out with patterns and results that can answer very specific questions. It might be able to learn or grow a little bit, but that's within set limits. And it doesn't really have any intrinsic consciousness or morals or ethics. It's no more moral or ethical than a hammer is. We make AIs. We are responsible for the choices that they make. Now, these AI algorithms are incredibly useful. We use them in our everyday life all the time. And the walking directions on your phone when you're going somewhere, that's powered by AI. The filters on your emails, checking to see whether something's spam, that's all AI as well. In your leisure time, your computer games are driven by, by AI, your social media feed is driven by, by AI, and if you travel to see someone face to face, well, there's an AI at your bank which is looking at that transaction to make sure it's genuine and not fraud. The thing is, though, that even though AI is an equation, it's not free of human bias. It's not entirely objective. And I think there are three steps that we can take to improve how AI works for us in the future, to make it more responsible towards society. Now, when you think about people with fast reactions being disqualified from a reaction test for reacting too fast, we can see that the way that AIs are built may have biases in them. So that is our first step. We must recognize that when AIs are created and when they spot patterns in data, that pattern is not the same as an objective truth. AI is often accurate, but we must always remember that it can be wrong. Because the quality of the results is only going to be as good as the data that it's using, and the code and the instructions that it's given to work with. And one of the things that comes in here is that minority groups whose needs are often missed when AI is being made are at particular risk from systemic errors. Now, I say that because AI is already powering major societal problems. Facial recognition systems can automatically recognize people, but they do have numerous issues. They're particularly poor at recognizing the faces of people who are black. And sadly, due to social and historical conditions, people of color generally 
are the most likely people who facial recognition will be used on by the police. Elijah Cummings from America's House Oversight Committee summarized this problem really nicely. If you're black, you're more likely to be subjected to this technology, and the technology is more likely to be wrong. The assumption that AI is always accurate and always impartial can multiply already deeply embedded social prejudices. In a different example, in 2016, Microsoft released an AI online, and it was going to be learning from conversations with people. Within 16 hours of it going online, it had said, gender equality equals feminism. Cool. It had also said, feminism is cancer. So we can see that AI learning from unfiltered data does not necessarily produce useful results, neutral results, or even logically consistent outcomes. As a last example, algorithms on social media are developed to try and keep us engaged with their sites. They are individually choosing stories and adverts that we each will find compelling. But I think we all know that compelling is not the same as truthful. In the last few years, we've seen examples where half-truths or even lies have become widely believed after they've been spread on social media. And a made-up story, it sounds harmless enough. But when misinformation is changing the way we interact with others, or even voting in elections, and quite possibly already has, we can see that maybe AI is perhaps contributing to undermining the very foundations of our society. So what's the root of all of this? I mean, mathematics has no intrinsic social viewpoint. But the data sets chosen to train the AIs, the code, the instructions that are given by human developers, they do have biases. Fei-Fei Li, she's a chief scientist for Google and she's a Stanford professor. And a couple of weeks ago, she said this, be careful not to be misled by the name artificial intelligence. There is nothing artificial about it. AI is made by humans, intended to behave by humans, and ultimately to impact humans' lives and human society. Human choices can overlook data sources that would give insights into different communities. And the life experiences outside the knowledge of developers can, usually with no intentional malice, limit the usefulness of AI for all of society. I mean, these limitations do impact on the usefulness of AI's predictive ability. Because AIs are predictive systems. They look at data from the past and they use it to predict the future. Now, an AI may predict that when a person lets go of a glass of water, it would fall to the floor and may possibly smash. Now, it might predict that because a program has told it that. The program might say, this is what happens every single time. Or it might predict that because it's looked at thousands of examples of a glass being released, falling to the floor and smashing, and then the AI says, yes, this is exactly what happens when a person releases a glass of water. Cool. But we can see here that either way, the AI is going to be correct, whether it was told that or whether it learnt it for itself. This is great. We have a system that works. But there are problems here. So if you imagine that I am the AI developer, and I'm standing here in the spotlight, and I've trained my AI to predict this, and I can let go of this any time, and the AI will predictly correct, correct, predict correctly that it falls to the floor. You know, this, this seems like it's 100% correct. It seems like it's ob objective. It is absolutely true. And I might say, this will work for everyone. If you let go of this glass, it will fall to the floor. Seems great. But if I'm not the central user of that AI, if I'm just slightly to the side of the spotlight, that AI's prediction could be completely wrong. All it takes is standing a little bit away from the center to reveal that a glass can be released and not fall to the floor.
Thank you. The prediction that a moment ago seemed to be objective, we probably all agreed with, is revealed to be subjective. The biases of the developer, the centrality that they had, and the data that they trained and tested it with were all limited. To make that prediction better, all it needed was adding a viewpoint away from the mainstream. So this gives us our second step in how we can improve AI in the future. The growing business of, of AI is a prime place for increasing the diversity within the tech, tech industry. Keep the people who are, belong, who are already there, that's great. I mean, it's about hiring and firing and replacing and things like that. But grow by bringing in more diverse communities and treat them to equal in the workplaces too. Because diverse workforces, they bring in new view, uh, viewpoints, expert skills that have immense value to the products and services that we are trying to develop and provide. And of course, this brings great social value to the communities who are bringing tech jobs into their sphere. I think from earliest education to adult careers, overcoming inequality is a good that benefits all of us. Everybody in society benefits from increased equality, both in direct ways and indirect ways. So for me, I believe this is absolutely an ethical duty. But it is a business necessity as well. Companies that speak to the widest audiences in the most useful, dynamic, and responsible ways will be the ones with the greatest success in the AI-driven future. We need everybody's viewpoint to make AI work and to drive business as well. So as I've mentioned, there are some risks in using AI. And there's a thing I want you to remember. AI would be less dangerous for society if it were only a predictive system. The thing is, AI is shaping the future too. So AI is not only predicting for us, AI is shaping us. We've made these algorithms, and whether it's getting a driving license or applying for a loan or getting arrested based on facial recognition systems, decisions made about our future are being based on the results of AI. Because we get all our data from the past. And yes, we have to get our data from somewhere. But the past was not necessarily an equally golden age for everyone. We don't necessarily want to replicate that past into the future. The social risks of AI and its misuse, I think, are clear, I hope. But I come from the video game industry, where it would appear that AI is going to be completely harmless. Because in my industry, we're continually using AI to make our games more engaging. In the game No Man's Sky, our algorithms created literally billions of creatures and worlds so that every single player could find a new world or species. Awesome. In Skyrim, computer-controlled characters each had their own priorities, their own goals, which were aside from the player's quest. So when the player met them, the world felt more alive, more exciting, great fun to explore, because of AI. But we also have examples where the data driving our games has gone wrong. Of course. So when Pokemon Go was released in 2016, an unintended pattern was noticed in its data. If you don't know po Pokemon Go, it's a smartphone game where you go to physical locations in the world, and when you get there, you can collect digital animals on your phone. So if you ne live near to these locations, then you're less likely to have to pay money to progress in the game, and your real-world travel costs to get to those locations is going to be less. That's okay, right. The problem was that the data used to choose these locations was based on the most popular locations in a previous game. And that previous game was largely played by affluent white city dwellers. And so Pokemon Go players from marginalized, rural, or poor neighborhoods were financially disadvantaged if they wanted to get the same experience as people who lived in richer urban neighborhoods. Now, this affected many different groups. But one group which was disproportionately affected was people of color again. Completely unintentionally, the developers had used data from the past that reinforced systemic racism that changed privilege to skin color. Now, I don't believe for a second 
Not for a moment there was any intention or racism within that team. If those game developers are like any of the ones that I know, they would be horrified by that idea. But the data driving the game was not neutral. It was not objective in how it treated all people. Social divisions from the past meant that the players with the least privilege in the pre present were being penalized again. And that was going to increase social division into the future. Stepping slightly to the side of video game examples, do women program computers? I would hope the answer is obvious. Recruitment agencies looking for a top go-getting programmer might have hundreds of applications to filter. And these days, an AI is actually quite likely to be doing the first filter for them. So if you look at the historic data about the last couple of decades of who are the top programmers, you might say, well, men are going to have the best career in programming. And so the AI might just disregard applications from women and people of other genders. Without being told to do this by humans, an AI could be reproducing gender bias. This isn't AI predicting good future employees. This is AI shaping the future workforce. Countering this is going to need awareness, and it's going to need deliberate action by AI's developers. So that's going to be our third step to improve AI in the future. We need to recognize that data contains myriad sample biases. We need to recognize that it does not automatically become socially, morally, ethically, or economically neutral. If necessary, put data ethicists at the core of your team to make sure you're treating your data and your algorithms in ways that means the whole of society is treated equally. I think this is the way that we can help ensure that we get the best out of AI for everybody. Because artificial intelligence, it is a fantastic tool. But I think we're currently too accepting of its neutrality. We're at the beginning of our journey with it. And I believe that the three actions I've discussed today will help us make AI better for everybody and use it more responsibly in the future. So those ideas, again, are basically we must recognize that the patterns found by AI are not the same as unquestionable truths. We must diversify the tech industry to get the best products and services in the AI-driven future. And thirdly, we need to consciously engage with the data and to, rather than just assuming that it's neutral. And even big data can miss the most marginalized of groups. And that mistake, that can multiply across all of social strata to create imbalances in society. Now, as I said at the beginning, AI's decisions are constrained by their creators and the data that we train them with. Social divisions that are based on race, gender, ethnicity, wealth, and other personal factors, so many personal factors, are the reality of our past, and they are the reality of present today. And I think these dangers could be amplified by AI, not overcome. AI reflects us, good and bad, and digital technologies do not automatically fix the problematic legacies of the past. AI could help us fix this, but we'll only do so if we take conscious action to make it work for everyone. Thank you all for listening.